It is a Tuesday morning, a morning that I'm supposed to be at work. But I'm not because uh, last night I started developing flu and cold symptoms. And uh, what that means is that if you start feeling like that, whether it is COVID or not, you're supposed to go and get tested. Right now, uh, I woke up and I'm feeling worse and I'm just hoping it is a cold. But I have to head to the one of the nearby testing centers and most of them are drive through I'm hoping that I don't have COVID because if I do, that means that I will have contracted COVID twice because I had it like last August. I. I got COVID and I had to stay in for two weeks, 14 days of, actually it was more than 14 days because the day that I was supposed to be okayed as recovered, I still hadn't recovered my uh, smell back, my sense of smell and sense of taste. So I had to stay in for two more days, which was uh, 16 days in total. It was horrific. It was bad. I suffered, not only suffered the symptoms of having COVID, but also suffered the fact that I couldn't step outside, I couldn't go anywhere. So I was required to stay indoor. I even had the army come to check on me every three days or so. That was a very bad experience for me. And I'm hoping that I haven't contracted it again. The reason why I'm hopeful that it's not COVID is because there are very rare cases of getting it more than once, but it's not impossible. If I got COVID, I'll be one of the few people who got it twice or more than once. But I highly doubt that. But you can never say never because the last time before I acquired COVID, I used to think that, well, it's something that's happening out there and I couldn't imagine myself contracting COVID. So I'm heading to one of the drive through and within a few hours, I will have my uh, results. guys just had my covid test done and all i can say is that i really really hate it the amount of shoving in there is just horrendous i hate it i need time out the way they shove in those earbud looking stuff in your nose i, I need time out to just uh, get my bearing because when my head is spinning it's like it's like the thing just uh, swirls around your brain and then when it's all done you're confused and you don't know where you are i hate that test because i'm tearing up uh, that is the fourth time i have done a covid test and i hate it ah uh, some are better than others i think also it depends on how uh, an individual does it because the previous one was better she was a bit gentle but the one that i just came from oh my goodness she was shoving in there and just when you think that she's about to remove it she keeps on spinning it and you can literally feel it's like it's touching your brain let me go back home and uh, do stuff around the house okay so it's been a couple of days uh, since I went and got tested for coronavirus and I'm glad to tell you that it turned out to be negative. Um, but the thing is that I didn't update you because I got really, really sick. Um, I got really sick and it turned out to be a very bad flu. Um, but now I'm feeling better and I'm about to go somewhere and I'm going to update you on exactly what I'm doing today. So. Today, um, I am going to get laser done. So I'm going to get Brazilian laser and I got really tired of doing it traditionally, uh, of traditional hair removal methods. So uh, this is not my first time going to do laser. It's actually my third time. And the first time I just didn't think of uh, talking about it, but today I decided I'm going to talk about it. So I'm gonna take you there with me. Probably I won't be allowed to, um, going with you because of privacy matters but as soon as I get in there I'm going to as soon as I come out sorry I'm going to tell you how it was uh, because you know uh, shaving using a razor which is a traditional method or I, I tried that but you know you know I'm going to talk about it you know what it does like it's, it's not it's not the it's not the best way to do things uh, because over time there's been methods 
to do it better, which uh, reduces those effects that you know when you do it with a razor. So I am going in there right now. By the way, I'm doing, um, I've been doing uh, my underarms and um, it produced very good results. I decided to do Brazilian as well. So this is my, it's, it's going to be my fourth time doing uh, underarm and third time doing Brazilian. So come with me and I will show you how it works. I'm a bit disappointed because I have just come from the laser clinic and my appointment had to be scheduled. Uh, before I continue, let me just apologize for the background noise because uh, I'm using my phone to do this and I don't have an external microphone to filter the noise so I'm going to work on that. But yeah, getting into the story, I actually had my appointment scheduled because um, this is what happened. So before you get uh, your laser done every time, there are several questions you are asked. Even before you start your laser treatment, there is a form that you have to fill to ensure that they do it safely for you and effectively. So before you start your laser treatment, so laser treatment is basically using laser um, to remove hair or hair removal using laser. Um, so you are asked to fill several forms just to ensure that it's going to work better for you and safely well at it. So you are asked about your skin color, or what kind of complexion you are and what type of hair you have. Now the reason you are asked these questions is nothing to do with the race but to ensure that they choose the right treatment for you because uh, this is how it works. So if you have a black skin uh, like me, they laser isn't likely to work best because if you've done physics which i didn't do it myself but um i, I know the people who did physics know about this so they're using laser the principle of treatment here is laser so if it's able to penetrate your skin then better it works so the laser is supposed to penetrate to your skin to your follicles so that it kills the hair growth from your follicles so if you have a darker skin it makes it difficult for the laser to penetrate your skin. So if you have a darker skin, it doesn't work as best as someone who has a fairer skin. Another factor is the darker the hair, the better it works. Because that's where it targets. It targets darker places. So uh, if your hair is darker, the better it works for you. And if your hair is fairer, it doesn't work as best as someone who has dark hair. So there's a thin line there because if you have uh, fairer skin it works better for you because the laser is able to penetrate your skin and if you have a darker skin the, it makes it hard for the laser to penetrate your skin so you ask those questions so that you can able to use a different machine depending on your skin color now that's that's one thing you are asked another thing is that if you are bleaching your skin they will not do it for you. I don't know what the reasons are, but it has a negative side effect. The reason I've been going several times, and uh, today I had my appointment scheduled because it's something that I've been ignoring, but they've been probably asking me, but because uh, I thought it's not, uh, I don't fall in that category. So they ask me several questions every time uh, before I do my laser. Like for example, have you bleached your skin? Have you used antibiotics? So, that's something that I learned today and that's the reason my appointment was rescheduled because um, as I've told you I was uh, I had a flu and I was uh, given a prescription of antibiotics so it's been four days since I stopped taking the antibiotics and they told me sadly I'm not going to be able to go through the laser treatment and they had to reschedule it so they've rescheduled it two weeks from now because uh, 
They've told me that you have to stay for at least two weeks for the antibiotics to get out of your system. I don't fully understand how that is going to affect me, but clearly they are very strict on such things because they don't want the liability to fall back on them. So they have to make sure that they ask these questions and so that if anything happens to their client, they are not liable. So they depend on your complete disclosure and honesty when it comes to such things. So I don't know exactly how it's going to affect uh, the treatment, um, but uh, they've told me that if you have used antibiotics uh, within the last uh, two weeks, uh, they can't do it until they completely the antibiotics clear in your system completely. So I've been rescheduled again, uh, which is a very sad thing because I was looking forward to the treatment four weeks and a few days, and I was looking forward to the treatment again. So for people who have a fair skin and dark hair. It takes uh, about six times for your hair to completely disappear. But some people might have to go longer depending on those factors that I've mentioned to you. So this, this being my fourth time, I can say it's fairly good. Like I, I like the results already and I don't mind going again and again until I, I see the hairs completely stop growing. So I'm very happy about that. And because I got tired with using razor, using uh, those creams that help you shave because uh, within a week the hair will start growing back again now I hadn't tried a waxing which <laughs> I understand it's a very painful experience waxing because I haven't waxed a Brazilian I haven't done Brazilian waxing or underarm waxing I only did eyebrow waxing and I well I can imagine how it can be down there so that's the update if you have any questions about uh, laser I'm not an expert but I'm just going to speak through my experience then the results are exceptionally good it has made a tremendous difference to my hair management if I can put it like that hair management <laughs> hair management <laughs> yeah because some of us don't really like that hair down there